गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू योर फर्स्ट वर्चुअल क्लास ऑफ 2021-22. चिल्ड्रन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डू चैप्टर नंबर वन डिटेक्टिव नंबर थर्टी फ्रॉम योर न्यू लर्निंग टू कम्युनिकेट दैट इज एल आर लिटरेरी रीडर डिटेक्टिव नंबर थर्टी अ डिटेक्टिव इज इज समन हुज जॉब इज टू डिस्कवर what has happened in a crime or other situation and to find the people involved some detectives work in the police force and others work privately in this chapter there is a young detective who is the hero of this story named john john stood looking up and down the street he was unhappy and his friend billy had gone to the dentist with his mother and john could not think of anything interesting to do just by himself so two characters are john and sec- uh, second is billy he pulled down the zipper fastened fastener of his jacket as he did so his fingers touched a metal badge pinned inside the jacket and his face brightened on the badge was written detective number 30 what was written on the badge detective number 30 i will play the detective john said to himself i will follow a thief i can do that by myself but who is there to follow he he that is john said to himself all these things just then he noticed a car parking by the side of the road and he saw a man getting out of the car now this was something the man waited for a moment then walked up the street towards a small shop john followed him and when the man entered the shop john was closely behind him the man went to the corner of the shop where the telephone was john bought a milk chocolate from the shop if the man noticed him at all he saw only a boy eating chocolate and he did not know that the same boy was following him down the street so children john was playing the detective next page page number 8 the man went to his parked car and he did something strange he got in started his engine then pulled up the handbrake and got out leaving his engine running looking about he quickly walked up the path to mr stone's big house and went around to the back of the house john watched very carefully he was afraid to follow the man but he wanted to see on the street there were some big empty boxes john crept into one of them through the cracks it was easy to see both the house and the car he looked carefully at the license plate of the car suddenly the front door of the house opened and a man came out but it was not the same man who had gone in that man had a smooth face with a big nose and he wore a hat children underline this line the man coming out had gray whiskers and wore a grey cap and was carrying a suitcase read this paragraph again and again it is not the same man john said to himself but just then the man passed close to his hiding place john looked closely at him and he was very surprised the man ran to the parked car jumped in released the handbrake and drove off John came out of his box and looked after the car eyes and mouth wide open just then there came a call hi john it was billy john ran towards him listen billy i have but billy stopped him and said say john i had ice cream and then i went to see the film tarzan underline the film tarzan what a beautiful film that's the fourth time i have seen it John wants to say something to Billy but Billy was not listening The boys became interested in the story of the film 
and John forgot his own story. The next morning at breakfast, John was trying to think of some way to ask Daddy for some money. He wanted to see Tarzan. Daddy, who was reading the paper, that is page number nine, and uh, the picture. You can see who was reading the paper as he ate his breakfast. Looked across at mother. Some people broke into Mr. Stone's house yesterday. The family were away. Lot of silver and jewelry were taken. They came to have carried the things away in a suitcase. Mr. Stone is offering a reward. John laid down his spoon. Would the reward be big enough for me to see Tarzan, Daddy? Don't be silly, son. Answered Daddy. You don't understand. Mr. Stone is offering a reward to anyone who can help him behind the gang that stole his things. Then John said, "Yes, I know, but it was not a gang. It was just one man, and he had a big nose and a hat when he went in. And when he came out, he had grey whiskers and a cap. Look here, son," said Daddy. "If you really know anything about this, tell me." So John told him about Detective Number Thirty following the man and hiding in the box and everything. Then Daddy said, "Well." I think I had better call the police and tell them what you saw. Will I get the reward, Daddy? Asked John. But his father was already on the telephone. In a very short time, a car stopped in front of the house, and two big policemen came into the house. John felt a little afraid of them at first, but one of them smiled such a broad smile that John smiled back. So you are the young man who is going to help us catch the thief, are you? Asked the policeman to John. Tell us everything you saw. So John told his story again. Now, you didn't notice what kind of car it was, did you? Then John said, "Yes, it was a dark green color. It was very muddy. I also know the license number." John took out a piece of paper from his pocket. The number was written on it: B one three one four double six. This was the number. Underline this. It will be easy for us to pick up that car now," said the policeman. "If we find it, we shall want you to come down to the station." The policeman hurried away, and John, seeing Billy across the street, called, "Say, Billy, do you want to go down to the police station with me? I am going to get a reward big enough for us to go to the cinema and see Tarzan." In the afternoon, Daddy drove up and called for them. The boys were a little afraid when they entered the police station. An inspector was sitting behind a desk. There were half a dozen officers in uniform, and at one side stood a few other men. Which of one of you boys is a detective? Asked the inspector. We both are, answered Billy. That is not real ones, of course, but play ones. John is number thirty, and I am number eighteen. But it was John who followed the man yesterday. Then inspector said, "Well, John, look at those men and see if the man you followed yesterday is there." John said, "Yes, he is. It is that man with the big nose. So that's the man you followed, is it? But you said the man who came out of the house had grey whiskers and a grey cap." Then John said, "Yes, he did. But they are the same man." Now, how are you going to prove it? This man says his car was stolen yesterday and he found it later. John grew suddenly shy. You tell them, Billy. Billy pulled his hand from his pocket and showed some small blue seals. Seals means a specially designed piece of paper with glue on one side. You see, it's this way. We try to see how many people we can follow, and the one who follows the most people wins. I have these blue seals, and John has red ones. We try to stick one of those seals on the man we follow. That's what John did yesterday when he went close to the man in the shop. The officers roared with laughter. What happened then? Asked Inspector. John continued the story. I thought it was a different man too, coming out of the front door. But when he passed near me, I saw the red seal on his coat that I had stuck. It may still be there. The two boys ran over behind the big-nosed man. Yes, there it is, cried Billy. And the officers went up and looked too. The children seem to have caught you, said the Inspector. <coughs> Now tell us. Where the things are? Yes, they have caught me," said the big-nosed man. "But you policemen would never have caught me without the children. They have got brains." Daddy said, "Well, come on, boys, let's go." 
Then John asked, "Do I get the reward, Daddy?" "You will surely get it," said a grey-haired gentleman. He took out a hundred-dollar note and gave it to John. "Then I am proud of such fine young neighbours," he said, shaking hands with the boys. Written by Alan Spencer. That's all for today, children. Read this story from the book also and watch this video. Thank you. Have a nice day.